Hi, this is my brother Earl. Hi, how you doing? Hi Earl, how you doing? Hi. Good. Could you tell me a little something about your sister Sharon? My sister Sharon? One of the nicest people you could ever meet in life. This Every is going to be a totally honest video. It is. Everybody should have a sister like my sister Sharon. I think this is the most peaceful place in the world. That's what I think. But I don't know how much of this you're going to get on that microphone because when I start talking about this, I get as calm as the water. You know, or as calm as it makes me feel. Isn't that wave beautiful? Look at that. Absolutely great. So why do you need, why do you, why do you search for calm? Well, it's very difficult taking care of as many people as I do with this virus. And then to have some of the other crazy things that go on. So I sort of run away from home and I take a vacation at the water. That really helps a lot. And it's very tranquil, it's very peaceful. I sort of, it's like washing my soul, you know? It sort of just cleanses me and then I feel very peaceful. And then I can get back out here and take care of them again. There's not a lot of people who want to really get involved in that. A mm -hmm. lot of people are afraid to even deal with people, or you know, to really, how can I put it? To deal with the situation itself. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to ignore mm -hmm. it or they don't want to be bothered with or anybody who has a problem. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm proud of her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does she, um, do you think she spends too much time with that issue? Um, I don't really think she spends too much time. She spends enough. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's really too much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's times she may have to go speak or something like that, but I don't think she spends too much time. I kind of resented the amount of time that it took away from me. Mm -hmm. um, until I got to a place that I could really understand what you were really doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of worried about the girls mm -hmm. because I, I don't live in the same building that you do that I could really keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. And um, that kind of worried me. But since you seem to have that under control, I'm totally in agreement with what you're doing and very, very proud of what you're doing. I, I think that whatever it is you're doing now, you, you, you deserve it. You've been dedicated so long. The toll on me is that there are times when my family, they don't understand what I'm doing or why I'm doing it. And most of the time they're angry with me. My children are angry because they don't they don't feel that it's necessary for me to do as much as I do or give as much of my time. And that's hard because we've always been great friends, you know, able to talk about everything and do everything. Then it's sort of torn down all of my personal relationships. I don't have those anymore. Um, I just think of everybody as my friend. It's nothing personal with me. Um, and sometimes that's hard because it's, it's really nice to be able to share those times with other people, you know, when you're going through a difficult day, like when I didn't know whether or not my brother was going to get better, um, I really didn't have anybody I could talk to about that because my mate is also positive, so it's, it's, it's really hard, you know, you don't want to go and depress the other person and get them worried that this is going to happen to them or anything like that, so it just doesn't... It's taken a very, very hard toll on my mind, on my spirit, and my relationships. But, I just, as I say, I pray a lot, and I try to stay real strong with it. You know, I remain encouraged from that. And as I said, this is very tranquil, so it sort of just calms you. It really, really calms you. I usually come out here and just sit down and just listen to the waves. And then I get lost.
I think this child is a beautiful person and a wonderful daughter. And just a good person to know. Mm -hmm. And a real good friend. I found it very hard to do. It took me a couple of days to come up with a few ideas and a few things. And finally when I sat down, I decided that what I would do is just put down on a piece of paper the different things that were important to me and if I could find some type of a still picture to represent it and use that as a, a, a collage or a map or what have you, just to go into who I am or, or who I think I am. Um, the first part that I found to be important was the family piece. Um, I'm pretty close to my family, but in, out of the seven people, I'm very close to my sister. Um, if you pinch me, she feels it. Um, we talk about anything and everything. It's my world's best friend. Um, my brothers, ah, take them or leave them. My folks, your average type of folks that get on your nerves and when you're around them, you know, we like to be around them, but for so long and then we don't see them for a while, that's cool too. Um, the other piece that I thought was important to me was the friends. Um, I have about five good friends that I can call and talk to anytime, any day, and they could do the same for me. These are people that have been my friends, ah, oh, I'd say five years or better. I even have one that's been a friend for about 16 years, a whole family and my family and a whole bit. Um, I think friends are important and a lot of times these particular friends pull me through my rough times. The other part that um, I put a lot of time and thinking into is the work piece. A lot of my days are spent working, not just the 40 hours a week, I think a little bit after that. Um, I've done a lot of things in my <laughs> 31 years. But to me, the last three or four have been really important in that I started to work with people who are HIV positive and their families. Um, in my immediate family, we don't have people that die at an early age. Most of my family live to be 80, 90 years old and what have you. And um, in working with this population, I found myself um, appreciating my family a little bit more and being a bit more thankful for what I have. Um, it just made me really feel good to know that I could help people that um, needed. Uh, for instance, I can give a little hope, I can give a little encouragement to a friend, I can make someone smile, give them something to live for, because unlike a lot of people who work in the field, I don't believe that people die uh, with AIDS. I think people can live with it and for a long time. Um, doing the support group was a little uh, different for me in that it taught me a few things. Um, I first thought that I would just be sitting at the end and just running the group and have people say what they have to say and time would go. But this has allowed me to see a couple of sides of myself. Um, I'm as involved in the group as the group are involved with themselves. Um, they give me information, I give them information, it's more of a sharing type of a thing. It's been a real good experience and, and that's a different way. It made me see that we're all very much alike, no matter which way you know we sit in the group. Um, the time that I put in, into work I find is very important. On the other end of it, the third part that I looked at was the relaxation, the leisure type of things that kind of add to me outside of family and outside of work and outside of friends. And these are things that I like to do. Um, I like to sew, I like to cook, I like music, um, quiet time, uh, read books. Um, some of the things that I like to do generally, most women think are a little old-fashioned and that's okay, but that's what makes me comfortable and helps me to keep it together. Um, uh, music, uh, most of all, is very important. When I was in high school, I majored in music, 
uh, and biology for some strange reason. I wanted to combine the two. Um, the biology piece left me, but the music stayed. I like anything from reggae to gospel to R&B to heavy metal, you name it. If it's music, I like it. Um, sewing, I do a lot of sewing. That calms me down too. Um, I like flowers, I like wicker, I like um, pastel colors, I like lace, I like ribbon, all those girly girly things. Um, the um, relationship side of me is, is I think the, the smallest piece of me. I don't put a lot of time into that. But recently I've been doing a little bit of that too and that's not too bad. I guess that'll come along when it gets here and whatever happens, happens. Real nice gentleman. Um, and I think that in itself um, says me. I think it, the best picture of me would just to take would just to take a look at just the people that I deal with from a day to day basis. And my my mother used to say, if you really want to know um, what a person's about, look at the friends that you keep. And I think I have some pretty good friends, and I think that would just describe me. Um, I don't I, I don't enjoy being on the other end of answering and, and doing so it's, it's a little uncomfortable but in all honesty it's good for me to just take this time to just take a look at where I've been where I am now and where I'd like to go um, I don't think I want to do this again because <laughs> it's too difficult but I'm glad I did it I'm real glad I did it because it was very helpful. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ada. I'm 27 years old. Um, I work for a printing company. I'm an account executive for a printing company. And um, I just work. Sometimes I go out dancing and go to school on Saturdays to a wave project, which I enjoy very much. Um, I love music, I like swimming. If I go on and on and on, you probably think I'm a sport freak. <laughs> and um, this is my son, Miguel. Hi. He's seven years old, and he puts up with me a lot. Most of the that I like to do is ride my bike, and, and and watch light, lightning bugs move and catch them and 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 they run after them and that's all. My son is very important to me because he has part to do with me going on living. Because you know there was a time in my life where I just felt like I didn't want to go on anymore. And I just wanted to give up on everything and I didn't feel strong enough to be able to carry the load on by myself but little by little I came to see where you know I just continue to work and continue to be strong about everything and that's that's the main importance to me you know is, is my son because if it wasn't because of him I, I probably would have just gave up and just went on living the way I wanted to live well, she likes to do um um listen to music and listen to Spanish music sometimes, and she and she likes to um 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 just hang outside and drink and mostly she does um just hang outside and sometimes she takes things to the store and she writes things like food and then we go to school and then we come back and watch TV cartoons and I don't know what else to think of. Does she love you at all? Yeah she loves me and and sometimes she gets mad at me and she wanks me. Why? <laughs> because I be bad. <laughs> because I be bad. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes she has that looky snotty face. But I know that 
as long as I keep myself strong and being able to stand up to what I truly believe, you know, I can keep on going. And things get rough at times where I get discouraged and I just come home in one of my moods and I just don't want to be bothered and I isolate myself from people. And I know that's not the way of taking care of things, but I do that because I know how I am when I'm upset and I know um, how I can reflect off to another person. So just to, I, I think about another person before I think about myself, or how I can hurt them just because they see me hurting and I don't want to talk or anything. I just shut myself out at times. But um, I'm very loving and I, I give a lot of love. You know, even though I don't get any in return, I just give a lot of love because that's how I am. And I just like to hear people out and being able to be there for people and to um, to be able to understand their hurts and their fears, knowing that at one time I have went through a lot of hurt and a lot of fears within my life, you know. And sometimes I just wish I can do more than what I do, but how much more can I do but just be there for a person? And I feel that that's, you know, that should be enough. You know, just knowing that you have someone to turn to. This is my kitchen. <laughs> what are you doing? I was just checking the food to see if it was done. It's almost ready. I was asking my niece why she left me. <laughs> um, she came to visit me today. After a while, she comes. We keep in touch. I'm I'm very close to my family, not to everybody, but our family's close knit, and um, we always keep in touch with one another. We try not to be too distant with each other. And these are my, my babies over there, my flowers. <laughs> and, um, uh, what, what I hope we can really accomplish is putting something together where we can continue on even after the project is, is done and over with, where we can go on and, and get a video together for people to, to be able to see that um, there are projects and there are programs out there that they can get involved in to be able to, you know, once you, once you start putting yourself aside in a lot of situations, you, you can see that you're meeting a need. And that's what I have learned to do a lot is put myself aside and take myself out of the picture and think about other people and knowing that when they feel that there's nobody there, that I can turn around and say, no, you're wrong, there is somebody there. Maybe you're just not looking in the right place, but there's always gonna be somebody there. And it's just a matter of self-denial. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in ourselves that we think that we're the only ones that are going through this and going through so many problems and through so many changes. Yeah, we don't see that there's a lot of people out there that are going through a lot worse. And if we can just take our eyes off for ourselves just for a moment and see the need that's out there, and not only seeing the need, but meeting it, you know, because that's what we have to do. We have to get out there and, and be able to fight for these people because they gave up on fighting. You know, we have to be their backbone because they don't, they feel like that's it, you know, they give up. But if you're persistent enough, you can get a hold of a lot of people and let them know what you're all about and knowing that you're gonna be there for them no matter what. Misery Dane, that's my name. 
full of vitality. I am weird. I guess you're not. Depression is an art I practice. Misery loves company, they say. Oh no, misery hates company. I'm just a little alien visiting your planet. Stephen King wrote Misery just for me. Black Darkness, X-Men, New Mutants. I love Amita Bachan, the living legend. Books are the things I crave. Books give me lives, new and old. Amita Bachan, Amit, Amita. Stephen King, king of horror, Stephen King. Misery, full of contradictions, simple and complex. Goody two shoes, goody goody. My life's mission to help people understand AIDS. Non-existence, eyeglasses, hope and misery. Mother, wife, lover, womanhood. Everything disappears, everything appears. Misery Dane, that's my name. This is my body, tall and strong, legs sinewed, tummy round. I used to fit into my body, that me of reading, jogging, talking, eating, loving, stretched and tight, flushing out the edges. My fingers turned the page, my legs lifted light, my mouth would open and close for words, plums, others' tongues. Sometimes these days I no longer fit. That body, those blood cells, this day could hold foreign bodies, antibodies, which are not me. That shell, that contour, ha, touch it, see it, smell it, know it, but you won't know me. This I, not my body, this I of reading, jogging, talking, eating, loving, is locked in to the most familiar and frightening of places. serious. Uh, she's got an inner beauty that a person who's only for real can see. And I, I must say, I think you are absolutely brilliant. I'm very glad I hired you. However, there is a certain air of underdevelopment about you. And I think it has to do with your weight. We have too much bones to look at. Of course, I've known you for all my life. I've known you to be um, a very responsible, very live person, very smart. Well, I think definitely think you're crazy. Your mother must have dropped you a couple of times <laughs> while you're a baby. Pretty much, I think you've got a good head on your shoulder. A couple of years, maybe she'll get places. But um, <laughs> she's got to stop the get up kind of thing. <laughs> you got to get in slow motion. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no, don't <laughs> And that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank I don't like talking on camera. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. I would say, um, very bad girl. Uh, young. Uh, uh, intelligent. 
very into her job. Uh, very, very human. Oh, Glinda, how would I describe Glinda? She has um, a multi faceted personality. Um, she's pretty creative. Um, she's very quick to, she's very jovial. She can very quick to think of humorous things to, um, to counteract, offset a certain tone or emotion. Um, I find that she can be pretty moody sometimes. Um, but she, she, she has a tendency of snapping out of it as the day gets older. In the morning she's kind of like low key, but later on she warms up and she starts uh, singing, especially you know, around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. She Can you say <laughs> sing some of her numbers for me right now? On the Excuse me? Sing some of her favorite hits for, for me right now. Oh, she sings anything from gospel to <laughs> especially whining, um, from gospel to um, pop. Um, but basically, uh, she just jokes around. So she has to come to life at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Because it's time to go home. But anyway, right. guys. And so she's very um, concerned with, dedicated to her work. She's very much into uh, being a health educator. And, um, and apart from the job, she's um, active in the church. Well, I'm going to repeat what everybody else said. You have a great sense of humor. You're outgoing. I like when you do different voices. You bug me out. People say you're like my sister because we're both crazy. And I also wonder how you got the way you are. What schools you went to. What kind of family you have. Where you got your sense of humor from. Because um, it's kind of interesting to see where people go from being kind of shy to being very extroverted. I got the feeling that when you were younger, you probably were shy. Glenda at one point was a very shy young lady. And, um, since she got to be an adult, she's a big mouth young lady. <laughs> she grown out of it. She's a wonderful daughter. She's, um, she's considerate and courteous, and I believe she's really a hard worker, and whatever she has a goal, she goes to it. She gives her all to it. And um, she could be moody at some times, which all of us can. She got a really good sense of humor. Like she likes to fool around, and um, sometimes um, she fool. I think she got that sense of humor to keep from showing how much. Sometimes she had a depressing mood, but all in all, she's a um, she's a good person, and I like her sense of humor. Sometimes she can make me laugh. And what else, Glenda? What at all? Um, you're too skinny. I've known Glenda for the past eight years. She's very ambitious. She's very humorous. She's very independent. She's very caring. Um, she likes the fashion. She's very analytical. Um, she, she's a person that shows she cares. She shows her love, and when she falls in love, she really falls in love. Um, but that's the, that's the best thing about Linda. And she loves to be right. That's it. <laughs>